Color gamut masking is a great way to enhance your digital or traditional art. You can do this in several ways, by adding a certain mood or atmosphere to your art, or through simplifying the color selection process by limiting your palette. Gamut masking can also help you to create augmented color schemes while keeping your colors in harmony. The only problem is that most art applications do not offer a gamut masking tool. So I've put together this free universal color gamut masking tool that can be used with any art software that supports layered PSD files with masks. That includes Photoshop, Corel Painter, Clip Studio Paint, Procreate, Rebel, ArtRage, PaintStorm Studio, Medibang, and more. You can even print this tool for use in traditional painting if you like. So in this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the gamut masking tool. If you're interested in downloading this tool, there's a link in the video description. Now right now I'm working with Corel Painter, and this image you see here is an image that I created using a gamut mask. The gamut mask that I've chosen is located up here in the top right, and you can see that it's a triangular shape. The colors that I chose for this painting are contained within the gamut, and I have not chosen any colors that are outside of that gamut. Now you might notice there's some dark blue grays here on the mountains. Those are not visible in the gamut, but that's because this gamut is set to a certain lightness. If I wanted to make this lighter or darker, I certainly can. And just as well, I can make the colors that I paint with lighter or darker. What's important is that I don't want to change the saturation or the chroma of the color. So for example, I could use a green here, but I'd want it to be a desaturated green like I've used on the trees. I wouldn't want to choose a bright green like this, because if I paint with it, it's going to look really out of place. If I choose that desaturated green, I can make it lighter, and if I paint with that, it's not going to look so odd. Now if we were to shift this gamut mask to a different set of colors and create a painting from that gamut, then the painting would look much different. So the color gamut is limiting the colors that I can choose from, which can be used in a variety of ways to help you simplify and select color. Now if I want, I can sample colors from within this gamut, and I can add them as color swatches. That makes it quick and easy to pick the right colors. And so if I wanted a nice distant cloud, I could choose this light purple color. And if I paint up here in the sky, you can see I get a cloud that fits into the color scheme. And of course I could add yellow on top of that if I wanted to, or this pinkish color, or really whatever I want, as long as it's staying within this gamut. And of course, as I mentioned, I can take that purplish color and I can make it darker and I can put in some of that. But what's important is that I'm not changing the saturation. I'm only changing the value. And if I'm changing the hue, the hue has to stay within this color gamut. Now, right now in this gamut, all the colors of the hues are available, but you could limit your gamut to something else. And then you could end up with a painting like this that has distorted colors, but the colors still work well together. Now, how to use a gamut mask to create a painting is something that I'm going to go into in other videos. But for now, I just wanted to explain what a gamut mask is and what it can do. And then now I can move on to showing you how to use the tool. Included in the instructions is a link to download the gamut masking tool. This will give you access to my Dropbox. And inside that Dropbox folder, we have a few different versions of the gamut masking tool. There's the universal PSD version, which will work with any art software that can support layered PSDs and masks. And if you're using Corel Painter, there's a version that's specific to Corel Painter. There is also a print version if you wanted to print this out at home and use it for traditional media. And then there's some examples of gamut masks so you can try them out before learning how to use the tool. Here you can see there's a few different kinds of masks. So I'm going to go ahead and demo the Corel Painter version first. You can open the tool a couple of different ways. First, you can go to the Corel Painter folder, and you can simply double click to open up the gamut masking tool. I've also created some mixer pads if you want to add those to your custom workspace. But for now, we're just going to focus on the tool. The other way to do this is to install my custom workspace, and then go to File, Open Template, and I've included gamut masking as a template. This is the preferred method because then you'll be making a copy of the template, and if you save this file, it's not going to overwrite the original. And that's important because you'll be modifying this gamut mask, and you don't want to save over the original, otherwise you'll have to re-download the file. So the first thing we see is this color wheel, and this is called the Yurmby color wheel. That's Y-U-R-M-B-Y. If you're interested in the origins of this color wheel, you can do a quick Google search. But basically this color wheel matches the color wheel in Corel Painter. You have yellow on top, blue on bottom, and all the hues going around. But instead of a triangle in the center that has your value and your saturation, you have completely saturated hues on the outer edge of the ring. And as you move in toward the center, then the saturation starts to decrease. So the color starts to get more muted. And you can see on the saturation slider here, as I'm moving up and down, that color is changing. You might also notice that there are a bunch of layers here. 
The layers that are locked are layers that you're not really supposed to mess with, but the rest of the layers are what you use to customize the tool. So we have a couple of groups here for gamut masks and color modes. Let's click on the triangle to expand the color modes first, and you'll see that there's HSY, HSI, and HSL. Now we can swap through these different modes by clicking the eyeballs. Right now the HSL color wheel is visible, and HSL is hue, saturation, and lightness. But we could also turn on the eyeball for HSI, and now we can see hue, saturation, intensity. This is closer to how the human eye perceives color. If we do it before and after, you can see how it changes. The shifts in color feel a little bit more fluid. And then there's HSY, and in this mode you're seeing changes in luma. This means that the changes in intensity of the color are minimal. So you have these three different modes to choose from, but if you're going to be following traditional gamut masking methods, then you'll probably want to be going with the HSL. But you can feel free to experiment with the other ones as well, and you can use a combination of all three. Now what if you wanted to change the brightness of these colors? Well, you can do that a couple of different ways. One is you can look in your underpainting panel, and here you can change the value. I can make this darker or lighter. Now, this isn't going to be 100% accurate. You may notice that some of the colors are a little bit off. For example, these blues and greens look really bright, whereas the other colors look dark. But for the most part, it should do a pretty good job of offering you a range of values. This is the fastest way to change the value, but you may notice that if you go to sample your color or paint, and then you keep changing this value setting, it might start to wash the colors out a bit. So instead of using the underpainting panel, another thing that you could do is you can add a dynamic plugin layer for brightness and contrast. Now if you adjust the brightness, you can make it lighter or darker. You can just move that layer down so it's just right above the color picker. And the advantage to working with this dynamic plugin is you can double click next to it and you can always go in and change this and it's not a permanent change to the pixels on that layer. Now this is sort of optional. It isn't necessary to change your values this way. I'll explain a better way to do it in just a minute. So those are the color modes. Let's go ahead and open the group for the gamut masks now. And here's where we can start to apply gamut masks. All of these masks are currently hidden, so to apply that particular gamut mask style, you just show the visibility of the layer. So let's go ahead and start with complementary. You can see if I turn the eyeball on and off, I can hide and show that mask. I can also control the opacity of that mask if I want to make it lighter or darker using the opacity slider. Right now complementary is choosing yellow and blue, but if I wanted to change that to two different colors, I'll just go to Edit Free Transform. I can select Rotate, or I can hold down Control on my keyboard to get the rotation function, and then I can shift this color to pick a different color scheme. I'll click on the Check to Commit. Now I have purple and green as my primary colors. So that's one type of gamut mask. Let's take a look at another. Let's try Shifted Triadic. Here's Split Complementary, Triadic, Atmospheric Triad, Dominant Hue with Accent, Accented Atmosphere, figure eight, and triangle right angle. There's also a custom mask, which you can draw yourself, and you could really make any shape here. All you need to do is just click on the mask for that layer. You can select the polygonal lasso tool, choose your colors. For example, I might click on this orange, I click on this purple, on this blue, and then back on the orange to create a triangle. Then I want to select black, and I want to go to edit fill. That pokes a hole in my mask and creates my color gamut. I can hit control D to deselect and now I have my limited range of colors to choose from. Let's go ahead and go back to complementary here, and we'll take a look at how we can begin to use this to select colors for our painting. If you wanted to, you could create a new layer at the very top of the layer stack, and we can paint some little blobs of color on here. I'm gonna select the Smooth Scratchboard tool, but you could choose any opaque brush. I can hold down Alt on my keyboard and I can sample these colors, and if I wanted to, I could put in this green, I could put in this purple, maybe one of these desaturated magenta colors, and one of these desaturated bluish colors. So these are kind of the primary colors that I've selected in this color scheme. Since this is a complementary color scheme, the green and the purple are going to be the most dominant. And again, you could really choose any of these greens. If you wanted a more desaturated green, you could use that as well. Now if you want, you can shift these colors using the sliders to make lighter or darker strings, and you have some colors to use in your painting. Now again, you can use any colors that are in this gamut, but if you simplify things, it's gonna make life a lot easier. So now how do we take these colors into our painting? What we'll wanna do is we'll want to go to Save As. We can go ahead and give this a name, I'll just call it Test Mask, and you could save this as a Painter Riff, a Photoshop PSD, or a PNG, depending on how you wanna use it. I'll go ahead and just save it as a PNG so that it's a smaller file. 
save it somewhere where you'll be able to find it. And then here in Corel Painter, I'll go to the color mixer. That can be found in the window menu, color panels, and then mixer. And in the top right of the mixer, there's a menu and we can choose open mixer pad. We'll just select that test mask file. It opens in our mixer. We may want to select the zoom tool, hold down control and zoom out a bit. Maybe even hold space and pan over here just so we can see our gamut and our color swatches. And then we can select the sample color tool and we can sample these colors. We could work directly from these swatches. We could work directly from the gamut or we can save these color swatches to our color set libraries. If I switch over to this painting here, you can see that this painting uses a gamut that's very similar to this. For example, I have these purplish colors here, and then I have these greenish colors. And then there are a few desaturated blues, because those are available here in the gamut. There's even some desaturated pinks that kind of start to get into this area over here. There are some browns that are created from these desaturated reds and oranges. The yellowish color on the clouds. Again, that's a very desaturated pale orange. So you can see I get this really nice color scheme. As soon as I take something else, let's say like a bright red like this, and I try to put it in the painting, everything starts to look really off because it doesn't fit into that color scheme or that color harmony. So as long as I stay within this gamut, my color choices are going to look good. Color is subjective, so how you use this tool is really up to you. One thing that can be helpful is to open up your harmonies panel and make your monochromatic light and dark harmonies active. Then if you sample your main colors here, you can very easily get lighter or darker versions of that color. And again, you can sample from within your gamut here like so, and you can make lighter or darker versions of that color. Now in the mixer, I've also added some color swatches. I have my values here from white to black, but I also have some almost gray hues. So there's an almost gray yellow and almost gray green and so on. That's because those colors are a little bit small here and hard to click on. So if you're looking for a very desaturated yellow, you can click this instead of trying to click this tiny little piece here. If we wanted to add these colors to our color set libraries, we can do that. We could sample this green color and then just click the plus button here to add it to our library. And if we wanted to alter that color a bit, make it darker, make it more desaturated, we can add that swatch and so on. That way we lock in these colors and we can reference them again and again. If you wanted to delete a color, you could click the minus button, and of course you can delete colors as well. Now you're probably wondering whether or not you can create these color swatches automatically because there is a feature to do that in Corel Painter. That's kind of a yes and no answer because you can do it, but it might not work as well as just doing it manually like this. I'll show you what I mean. I'll go ahead and go back to my gamut here. I have the swatches layer selected. In the color set libraries menu, I can choose new color set from layer. Now there are 12 colors here, but I'm going to put 14 because I want to count black and white as well. And as you can see, it got some of the colors, but it also added some of its own colors. Sometimes it tweaks the colors. And then the other issue is that the colors are kind of out of order. Now you can change the order of the colors. You can go to sort order and you can sort them by hue, lightness, saturation, by lightness, hue, saturation, or saturation, hue, lightness. I find HLS works the best. It gets all the hues grouped together. But again, as you can see, there's some colors missing. This light green is not in there. And there's this weird light gray that's not one of the colors. So you could use this as a starting point. You could delete the colors that are not right. And you could add in the colors that are missing. And again, you could sort it. If you wanted to, you could even change the order of the colors to get them right. But as I mentioned, just sampling them and adding them yourself is actually going to be a lot less work. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this color set. And I'll show you how easy it is just to add the colors real quick. I'll just sample and add them in. And as long as you don't have too many colors here, it doesn't take much time at all. I'm just holding Alt to sample, and then clicking that plus button. And very quickly there, I have all of my colors to use in my painting. So I can go through and select this green. If I wanted to add some green in the grass here, I can do that. If I want a nice purple color to use for my trees, I can do that. A lighter color for the highlights. Now, of course, these are much brighter than the colors I used in the painting. So again, if I wanted to, I could desaturate them to an appropriate value. Then I have something that fits in better with the kind of scheme I'm going for. Same goes for that purple. I'll just desaturate it a bit. Then it fits in much better into this color scheme. So it's going to take some practice to learn how to use this gamut. Just play around with it and it'll start to come to you little by little. But it really is a great way of choosing color for painting. Now, if you're using my custom workspace, you may notice that I have a few little panels here kind of hanging off of these other groups of panels. 
These panels are meant to make it easier to work with the gamut masking feature. So for example, I have remove color set. If I wanted to remove this color set and delete it, I can do that. I can also sort the colors by hue, lightness, and saturation, and I can restore the default color set. Now by default, if you're using my workspace, and you should be seeing this empty color folder called Painter Colors. I've gone ahead and just removed all the colors from this. That way you can just add colors to it without it having something in it already. I can add some colors to that set as I'm painting. And then if I want to clear that out, I'll click on Restore Set, click OK, OK again, and it clears that out so I can add in a fresh set of colors for my next painting. If you wanted to export colors, you could do that too. Just go to the Color Set Library's menu and choose Export Color Set and you can import color sets and bring in sets of colors. So you could save these color sets along with your artwork. Now there is another way you can work with this gamut mask. Instead of opening it in the mixer pad, you can go to window mode. And then if you wanted to, you could have these windows side by side and you could go in here and sample colors and paint them into your painting. But you do have to remember to click back and forth between the two windows before you sample your color, which isn't quite as fluid as using the mixer. The advantage to doing it that way though is that you can then go in here and you could change between the different color modes. So if I wanted an HSY color and I wanted to get some greenish yellow colors that are a bit different from each other, I could do that. Or if I wanted to, I could change the value to get lighter or darker colors. So if I wanted a nice dark set of colors in my gamut, I could do that and then I could get some nice dark greens. If you want to restore your mixer pad, you can go to the menu and you can restore one of my three mixer pads. For example, I'll do the HSL, and then we get this wheel here. Now you could use this without a gamut mask on it. You could just use it to pick color if you like. I have a couple custom buttons here that will open your mixer pad if you wanted to load a mixer pad. So I could load that gamut there, or if I want to load a different gamut, then I can do that. I also have a button to create a new color set from a mixer pad. The way that you would use that is you would go to your gamut mask tool, select the gamut, Make the mask 100% opaque so you're not showing any of those dimmed out colors. And you'd want to go ahead and go to Save As. I'll save this as a PNG. I'll load it into my mixer pad. Zoom out just a bit so I can see the whole thing. And then now if I wanted to, I can add a new color set from the mixer pad. I can choose however many colors I want. Let's say 12. Click OK. And we've automatically pulled some colors from our mixer pad. But again, it's not always going to choose the best colors. I got a bright green here, a dark green, and then a lot of purples and some gray colors. So again, it might be better to sample the colors yourself and add them in to make sure you're getting the colors that you want. Especially if you're painting from reference. If you're painting from reference, look at your reference photo. Set your gamut first to encompass those colors and then pick the colors from your gamut and add them as swatches. Here's an example of a painting where I did just that. Most of the painting is done in these bluish hues. And then there is a little bit of red and yellow and brown, but it's very desaturated. So that translates to this grass here, which really fits into this nice cool color scheme. You can see up here on the clouds, there's a little bit of that purplish color that again is over in this muted area of the gamut. And it gives me these nice shadows on the clouds. So that ought to give you a pretty good idea of how to use the gamut masking tool in Corel Painter. But let's take a quick look at how to use the universal version of this in Photoshop so that you can get a feel for how to use it in other art applications. And don't worry, the process will be basically the same as what we've done here in Painter. I can open the Universal PSD version by double-clicking on it or opening it through my art application. The tool opens in Photoshop and it has all the layers exactly the same as they are in Corel Painter. As you can see, I can go between these different color modes just like I could in Corel Painter, and I have the different gamut masks that I can choose from. It's easy to select this layer, free transform it with Control T, and then rotate it to get a different selection of colors. Now since Photoshop doesn't have the mixer pad, you'll need to work with this in a window. So I can just drag my window out here, can create a new canvas that's also in a window. And just to get them lined up, I'll go to Window, Arrange, Two Up Vertical. And if I want to, I can just drag this over like this, make this a bit smaller, fit my canvas here on screen. Then I can sample my colors and paint and I have my nice gamut of colors that work really well together. And again, just like in Corel Painter, if you wanted to, you could add an adjustment layer for brightness and contrast, and I can increase or decrease the brightness of the colors within my gamut, as you can see over on the left. This is a live filter, so I can go in and edit this at any time if I wanna make them lighter or darker. Now, if I go to sample this color, I'm gonna get white, and the reason why is because once I've added this live effect, 
it's by default selected the mask, which has white on it. So all I need to do is just click off of that mask. Then I can sample these colors and I can paint them into my painting. So I can get those lighter greens, can get these brighter colors and so on. Now again, as I mentioned earlier, when you're shifting the colors this way, it may brighten and darken them too much. So what I recommend doing is just kind of keeping it at its default setting and then just using the color sliders to make your color lighter or darker. So for example, there's my darker green. If I want an even darker green, I just move that brightness slider or value slider. Now it's important that if you're tinkering with this color gamut mask in Photoshop or another art app, that you don't save over your original. So if you want to reset it to its default, you can go to revert and that'll put it back to its default setting. And really this process I just went through would be the same for any art application that can support Photoshop PSDs with layers and masks. So there you go, that's a demonstration of how to use my universal color gamut masking tool. If you're interested in learning more about color gamut masking, I'll be releasing more videos showing how to paint with the color gamut mask, but you can also search YouTube or Google for color gamut masking and you'll get lots of great resources. It also may be helpful to learn a little bit about color theory. For that, I'll refer you to some of my tutorials. You can get to those videos by following the links I'm showing at the end of this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.